Hi, I'm Kevin Dahani, and today I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to do plaster wrap for making things like masks or other objects. I will include a list of materials for everything that you'll need in order to do plaster wrap. The first step for doing the plaster wrap is to get all your materials and supplies ready. It's just helpful if you get everything all prepped in advance. So for doing the plaster wrap, what you're going to need is obviously the plaster wrap itself, uh, scissors. I use a clay sculpting tool to help when I'm doing the plaster wrap to get it in in certain little areas and crevices. You're also going to need some kind of non-stick cook spray and a bowl that will be filled with warm water. I also have some paper towels handy just for wiping your hands on uh, during the process. So the um, thing that you're going to want to start out doing is by pre-cutting your strips of plaster wrap. This is what the plaster wrap looks like. It comes in a roll. Uh, different sizes it comes in. This is an 8 inch roll and uh, it also comes in like a 4 inch roll. I like the 8 inch roll because I figure um, it's nice the strips cover uh, bigger areas and then if I need to cut it down it's it's easier to just cut it down so you're gonna start by just cutting say one and a half inch to two inch wide strips and it doesn't have to be exact it's uh, really the size of the strip is gonna depend on um, what what it is that you're covering so as you can see this is a clay armature of a mask it's not a super huge piece so these strips are gonna work great to cover this mask. So I'm going to cut a whole bunch of these strips out and then I'll move on to the next step. So I have all my plaster wrap strips all cut out and ready to go. Um, for this project I kind of just did a, a guesstimate. I took one strip and kind of went like this and, and counted about how many I'll need uh, for this first layer which I know I figured around 20 or so. It's no big deal to just to cut more as you go along, but that's a good starting point. So the first step then, um, after all this uh, is cut out and your materials and supplies are ready to go, is to spritz the, the clay with the nonstick cooking spray. And it's just a light spritz like this, just what I'm doing. What this does is it acts as sort of a release agent once um, the plaster strips have been applied and they're dried on there, it, it just makes it really easy, or much easier, I should say, to take it off. Um, and it also keeps the inside of the plaster wrap clean um, from the clay. I mean, there's still gonna be a little bit of clay on the plaster wrap, but, but not as much if you didn't have it. So that's it. That's all I do for the cooking spray and uh, ready to plaster wrap. I've got my bowl of warm water. For some reason you can, it's the water temperature is going to cool down as you go but I always start off with the water really warm. I don't know, for some reason it just seems to work better for me with the plaster wrap. So this is what you do. It's kind of like paper mache. You just take the the dry plaster wrap strip, figure out where you're going to start on your project for, for this, I'm going to do all, try to do all mostly vertical strips for this layer. And then I think I'm going to do, I'll do, end up doing a second layer of the plaster wrap. And I'll go back and I'll do horizontal. I'll do it the opposite direction. So, all right. So what you're going to do is you're just going to set it, dip it in the water. You don't even need to leave it in real long. You sort of, I, I drag it across the edge of the bowl to get any excess water. And then you're just going to... Put it right over the clay just like that try not to get any folds in the plaster wrap and then what I do is you see the plaster wrap is full of all these tiny little holes I don't know if you can see it because uh, basically what, what it is is it's cheesecloth it's cheesecloth that's that's been treated with like gypsum and I don't know whatever plaster <laughs> chemicals they use um, and so what you do, it's while it's wet, is you kind of smooth it on and you're basically kind of covering all the little holes because it, it's, it's, as you can see, it starts getting kind of this white, the white creamy gypsum sort of comes off. So um, I just sort of go over until I can hardly see any of the holes. 
on that strip, see how it's much more solid white now? And just take another strip and just keep going. And I overlap onto the last strip just a little bit. Now this is where your scissors gonna come in handy. You can just snip when you're going around areas because it, it does not tear. Unlike paper mache that you can just tear it with your hands, this does not tear, you have to cut it. So I've got kind of a, a really sharp scissors here to do that. There we go, I'm just smoothing it out. And then going around her muzzle area here, I'm gonna need to make a, oh, maybe at least one or two slits. So this is the same type of material that doctors use when they, when they put a cast on. If you have a broken limb, this is what they use. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this over uh, a bit of a fine detail. So over her eye, what I do is I take my little sculpting tool. You could use your fingers too, but it's just easier to get in the crevices. And I just kind of gently move this until it's in that crevice. Got a little fold there. And there you go. So I'm just gonna repeat this process over the whole mask. And this is where the paper towels come in. Um, you can just kind of wipe off, wipe your fingers that way if you need to get more supplies or, or um, change your camera setting. <laughs> it's easy to do, you got your paper towels ready. Okay, so things have progressed nicely here with this main part of the face and doing the plaster wrap. Um, and what I wanted to do though is to give you some tips for when you've got something like an ear like this. So here are your options. Um, for my sculpt today and, and for this demonstration, I'm gonna completely wrap this ear front and back all the way around in the plaster wrap. Um, what's gonna happen is, and the reason I'm doing it that way is because I'm only making one copy of this mask. If I were going to be making multiple copies of this, then what I would do is I would only just plaster wrap just the very front of this ear. And the reason is, once it's hardened, I'm, I'm gonna have to destroy my, my clay armature to get the clay out. This is gonna create a hardened envelope, and I'm gonna have to scrape the clay out of the inside of that ear, which is fine. I don't care I'm, I, that, that the armature gets destroyed because I'm not using it again. But like I said, if you were gonna be making multiple copies, uh, like I did with my zebra mask, um, then uh, another option is, like I said, you can either just um, do the plaster wrap on the front of the ear, or you can completely leave the ears off of your, um, your sculpture, just do the plaster wrap, come back and add the ears on. You can, you can actually even um, plaster wrap the ears separately, or you could even make the ears out of craft foam or the paper mache clay. So lots of options for that, but just, and just wanted to show you um, when you're doing the plaster wrap, what those options are. Thought I'd show you in just a little bit more detail how to do the plaster wrap around such a big rounded uh, 3D surface. So this ear is a little bit tricky. I'm just starting up at the top here, overlapping, coming around the ear. There's going to be some excess, which I'll just trim off. You know, I'll just kind of set that side of my bowl because I might be able to use that. Um, rather than just smushing this flat and having lots of wrinkles, you can see this sort of sticking up here. What I do is I just take my scissors and I make a, make a cut and then I'll fold one edge over that way and then come back and fold the top over that. And it just lays a little bit nicer, a little bit smoother. 
Again, I'm going to smooth out as many wrinkles as I can. There shouldn't be hardly any wrinkles. And then I'm going to go over and, with this sort of white film, covering up as many of the little holes that you can see to make it look like one solid white piece. So now for this area, I don't need, I, don't, I can sort of measure, I don't really need a full piece. I can already cut some of that off. It'll just help me out a little bit. on the edge. Now the edge, I could go, and I might just do this around this way like this. Go ahead and do a horizontal wrap. And it's okay if you get overlap, no big deal. It's just, or extra overlap, I should say. It's just going to end up strengthening the piece even more. Smooth that out and underneath. And that ear is done. It's completely encased. So again, once I'm, uh, once I'm done, I'll have to dig the clay out. Uh, something you might notice as you're doing the plaster wrap, you know, it's cheesecloth. There's all these little strings that are, that are going to come out. If you can pick them off, that's great. Um, like some of these, though, that are on there, don't pull them. What will happen is it'll, st <laughs> it'll start to unravel and you'll, you'll tear your piece. So just kind of, you can just leave the strings on there. So that's the first layer of plaster wrap for this project. What I'll do now is let this dry 30 to 40 minutes, and then I'll go ahead and put on a second layer. Um, and then finally, uh, for the project, I'll show you how to remove the sculpture from the plaster wrap. Just a tip now uh, for while I'm waiting, I'll do my cleanup. And what I'll do is I'll take this uh, bowl of water. It's got lots of residue from the plaster wrap in it. Under no circumstances should you dump this down any drain that you want to continue to flow in your house. So dump this down your toilet, dump it outside somewhere um, for that cleanup. Because if you put this down the drain, you will have, uh, once it, it dries and hardens, you will have drain problems. So the first layer of the plaster wrap is dry and it's ready for the second layer. I did the first layer vertically, and so now for the second layer, I'll lay it on horizontally. And all that does is it just uh, serves to create some extra added strength in the uh, structural integrity of the mask. Now that the plaster wrap is dry, the next step is to remove the clay from the plaster wrap. So I've got my sculpting tools out here that can kind of help me to dig out some of the clay and from some of the little crevices. So um, most of the clay is going to be reusable, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll start out by just kind of going along and scraping the, the uh, some of the plaster off of the clay here in some of these places. Uh, and that's just, like I said, so I can reuse this WED clay. Right, so that looks pretty good. So then what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this, is I'm going to use my little clay tools here to scrape the clay from the plaster wrap. The plaster wrap is really barely like a millimeter or so thick. Um, so what you do not want to do is you don't want to pry the plaster wrap away from the clay because what that'll do is it'll kind of bust it up and then you'll end up with a very flimsy, a flimsy mask. So my goal is to remove the clay from the plaster wrap. And these tools are pretty effective for doing that. Open up my bag of clay and just throw the pieces right back in the, right back in the bag. And as you can see, look, I was actually able to, once I got it started there, I was actually able to kind of peel the clay away from my plaster wrap. So I'll just continue to do that and just take out big chunks. And this still, this process is going to take several minutes. So I'll, I'll check back once most of the clay is out and um, I'll maybe even show you some tips for getting it out of the inside of the ears. 
Okay, so the clay came out of the back beautifully, and I think that has to do with the using the non-stick cooking spray as a release agent. That really helps. You might see little bits of clay here and there still inside the mask, and for that I just take my tool and just give it just give those bigger chunks a little scrape. Um, overall, you see sort of the light discoloration from the clay. I don't do anything with that. I let that dry. Uh, maybe take a dry paper towel after it's dry and, and dust it out. I do not try to, you know, clean it out with a wet paper towel or anything. Because once it's dry, I will either do a layer of paper mache on the inside of this, or I'll just paint right over it. Uh, paint and paint and seal it. No big deal. So now for the ears, there is still clay inside of these ears. Basically, you have one of two options. You can, the easy fast, if you need this out fast and just need to have it done quickly, you can take your scissors um, or even, uh, you know, a utility knife and make a, a slit and just kind of surgically open this ear up and remove the clay. I don't want to do that, it, you know, you, it's, it's easy to repair afterwards, but it, you know, it's kind of a mess and you, you are, you know, interrupting the structural integrity of the mask when you do that. Um, with a little bit of patience, and if you just take one of your clay sculpting tools, you can dig the clay out of here. It's going to take a few minutes, um, but for me, it's worth it. So that's the tip on that. The clay that I removed from the mask, put back in my bag, and as I was putting it in, I would periodically give it a spritz with the water bottle. This WED clay has remarkable regenerative properties to it. So as long as it's not like completely dried out, it, it like it's like it comes back to life. So I give it a little spritz. Now my water is just water with just maybe a, a half a teaspoon of bleach in it. And the bleach just um, obviously is to prevent any kind of mold or anything growing from the inside of this bag when it's when it's damp. So you don't, I mean, you don't smell it or anything on the clay. So just a little tip for preserving your WED clay. With the last step complete of removing all of the clay armature, that concludes this tutorial of how to do plaster wrap. Be sure to check out my website at kevinpdehani.com for more videos such as how to do paper mache for beginners and how to make and use the paper mache clay. You can also check out the video to see how I complete this Nala mask for an upcoming Lion King production. Thanks for watching.